My name is Alma Mora. I'm a former student of UCHA. Today, I want to show you many of the different herbs and home remedies that my culture uses to heal our bodies, our physical bodies, our mental bodies, and our spiritual bodies. This is my mother, Josefina Mora. Hi, how are you? Uh, she grew up in Mexico in a small village. Doctors were, weren't very common, and if she found a doctor, they were very expensive to go to. So our ancestors taught us that they have passed on this remedy so that we can heal ourselves. I'm going to first start with home, rem home remedies for our children. Which is one of the best things to have around the house. It's great for diaper rash. You simply apply some, some of this cornstarch in, in, after every diaper change. And then if you take a little bit of cornstarch and water and a few drops of lemon, and you mix it, This is great for kids when they have diarrhea or upset stomach. It kind of settles everything in their tummy. Just to, it's a nice liquid. And it tastes great. This is for like when they have diarrhea, but this is when they're constipated. This is flaxseed. It's called linasa. You let you put some of these seeds in soak to soak overnight, and in the and first thing in the morning they drink the water without the seeds, and it helps them become more regular with their bowels. And also, this is rosa de Castilla, which is rose petals. It also relieves constipation for children. and it smells great. During the winter, our kids have a lot of congestion, coughs, fevers, and this is a great home remedy that I use very often with my children. This is Gordolobo, which is called mullion bark, cinnamon, and oregano. I mix them together and make a tea. And I give this to my children at night after giving them a bath and putting vapor rub in their chest, their feet. They drink this tea and they sleep soundly through the night. They don't, it helps kill the bacteria that's causing their, their illness. And it's important not to um, give them honey when they're under two years old. It's not good for them. But if you're older, you can sweeten your tea with honey. This is anise de estrella. It's called star anise and chamomile. This is the best, best remedy for colicky babies. It makes them more how can I say, more relaxed, and it helps their colic by passing gas or burping, and so this is great. And when nothing works, sometimes our culture believes in bad energy that are put into our children by people that don't really mean to do that, but it happens, and it's called mal de ojo. And, um, there's also a cure for that, which my mother's going to show us with an egg. This is very, very symbolic, and you have to be very open-minded, and um, this cleanses your spiritually. And my mother, she, she's going to show us how to do this. This is my daughter, Xiomara, 
And my mother's going to do a symbolic <laughs> cleansing of her energy, of her aura, with an egg. Santa Maria, Madre de Dios, ruega, Señora, por nosotros pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. Que salga el, el mal ojo de Xiomara, de su cuerpo, que salga todo, todo lo malo que se encuentre en ella, que salga, que salga de su cuerpo, para que ella se sane y se alivie. Santa Maria. Te lo pedimos. Señor, en el nombre de tu Hijo amado, Cristo Jesús. Okay. What she does is she prays that the bad energy that somebody has unintentionally given to her, um, or whatever it is, her illness, goes away. So then it is cracked. The egg is cracked in a glass of water, and it's put under her bed for the whole night. And we ask God that to take all that bad energy and put it into this egg. And in the morning, we just toss it out and ask it to never come back again. And also, um, my mother's going to teach us how to do, how to raise a sunken, soft spot. Sometimes when the soft spot here is not in the correct position, when it's too low, the babies get cranky and they can't sleep, they don't, they don't get hungry, and they're very restless. And so she's going to teach us how to do that. It's been used over centuries in her culture. She starts with a light massage all over her body. As you can see, massage has been around many, many centuries and in many different cultures. As you can tell, she's very wild. <laughs> and it's all right if they cry a little bit. She's not hurting her. It just doesn't like to be touched. And then this is very important to keep the head covered through the night or at least uh, not get her exposed to any air or cold air. It is a simple home remedy that works, even though she's not a very happy camper right now. Culture 
We use a lot of the cactus and the olive vera. We use the cactus to eat them in our meals and to also do them as a remedy for diabetes. We take the cactus, the cacti, we take the olive vera, just the clear, the inside. This is how it looks, it's clear. We put it in a blender and we mix it until it's, um, it's liquid. And then we add lemon to it and it's great for cholesterol and diabetes. My father uses this every day in the morning. It's like a shake. He uses this in the morning. This is a roasted tomato. Our ancestors believed that tomato in, in the feet and in the throat helps relieve swollen glands, sore throat. What we do is We take the tomato, we take the tomato, put it in a foil, like this. We put it in a hot, in a hot pan and let it roast for about um, 10 minutes. And when it's warm and mushy, We take it and apply it at the feet. Now I understand it's reflexology. But this is great for sore throat and for uh, swollen glands. Uh, what my mother used to do to us was also, she would take her saliva and put it in our feet and our coughs would go away and she didn't know that it was reflexology, but I understand now how we used to use it and we just didn't know the name of it. And this is regular honey. It's natural bee honey. We mix it with lemon. like this. This is great for coughs. This will help you loosen up the flame. And it's made into a syrup. This is um, barba de elote, which is corn silk. This is made into a tea. It is steeped and made into a tea. And then um, you can drink it throughout the day, cold or warm. It's great for urinary tract infections. It helps clear the burning. We use a lot of the lemons also. Um, having a lemon first thing in the morning, the juice will help you lose weight, uh, clear your body from toxins, and um, give you good breath through the day. So one a day. Um, this is sour cream. And it's great for um, the skin after being exposed to the sun throughout the day. You simply apply it on your face, let it stay for about 20 minutes, and then rinse. You can add a little bit of sugar, and it'll help also with the skin. What my mother used to do is also mix uh, cooking lard and sugar and she would make it into an ointment and she would apply it into our bumps you know if we would hit on our heads and 
on something, she would apply it, and you know, interesting, it wouldn't like swell, it wouldn't get swollen or or get bruised. So I use it a lot with my children. This this is a seed from an avocado. Spearmint and olive oil. This remedy is to clear the stomach, the intestines of our children and ourselves too. Um, children tend to swallow gum if they chew gum and that doesn't digest well. So it kind of sits there and with time they, they, they don't want to eat or they're just uh, they have upset stomachs and this you put it overnight let it seep and um, in the morning you give it to them first thing in the morning gently massage their stomach and they will really go potty and it will clear the stomach this is spearmint yerba buena and we use it a lot in our food and also in teas to um, settle the upset stomach. This is urine. No, I'm just kidding. It's ap apple cider. But in our culture, um, when we have a really bad cough that we just can't get rid of it, our ancestors, what they used to do, they would put a brick in the, s in the sun and let it get really warm and then just pee on the brick and stand on it for 20 minutes. The reflexology in, of the steam would help with their cough. And it's amazing, but it works. how to do it. Just imagine that this is your, your own urine and you, it's hot, it's fresh, fresh from the oven and then you apply it in the brick where you just urinate on top of the brick and when it's hot it will be like steaming and you simply stand on the brick without shoes and do like a rocking movement. This is why I, I told you that we have to be very open-minded and respectful of any cultures, home remedies, or their customs and their beliefs. Being open-minded is what makes you humble at heart. And being humble at heart makes you a great healer. My uncle, who's a curandero, he taught me about doing the cleanse like my mother showed before with Xiomara. But sometimes I do it when I feel that any, nothing's going right and that I feel stuck emotionally. I take an egg for seven days and I do a cleansing. I start from the top and I ask God to take any bad energy away from me and put it in this egg. And I say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The name of the Son, the Holy Spirit. The name of the Son, the Holy Spirit. The name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. The name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. The name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Take this bad energy away from me and let only the good come in me. <sighs> and it's faith what does the work. And I do that for seven days with a different egg and do the same thing the next day and then for seven days. Then I gather the eggs 
with that bad energy, I put them in a box and I go and throw them where uh, maybe like a river where they're going to go away from my life. And I say, you know, let this bad energy never come back to me or not to affect anybody that crosses the path of this eggs. Also, I always put a container of water underneath my bed every night so that um, my spirit at night has water to drink. It's very important because when a soul is thirsty, sometimes it wanders through a kitchen and it might go away from my house and I might be afraid of dying. It's a symbolic. I want to live. I want my soul to stay in me, my spirit to stay in me, and to never abandon me. So this is why I keep water as, as, as a symbol of life underneath my, my bed. And uh, this is this is mostly it, what I have for you today. Um, I just want to say it again, that it's so important to be open-minded and take it as, as you like, but always respect other cultures, respect other healing modalities, and respect is, will take you long ways because nobody is going to ever judge you or well, this is all I wanted to show you today. I really want to thank you for your open mind, for your open heart, and Paulette, Patrick, Christopher, I really want to thank you for all the knowledge that you have given me. And this is a piece of me. This is a piece of my culture that, I ho that hopefully will remain with you as a memory of Alma Mora. I'll see you. Love you tons.
sí, un ciclo de desarrollo que va pasando en nuestro cuerpo y vienen los cambios y lo tomamos como que si fuera una enfermedad sabiendo que no es una enfermedad sí, es un trabajo que nuestro organismo tiene que desempeñar y lo va a desempeñar porque esa es su función para eso tenemos nuestra cosa ¿Sí? Cuando nosotros tenemos, cuando las mujeres tienen un embarazo no deseado, pueden presentar muchísimos problemas mentales, físicos, emocionales durante ese tiempo, porque no están preparadas para ser mamás. ¿Sí? Van a tener un hijo no deseado. Y entonces es cuando tienen las complicaciones. En nuestras, cuando tenemos, por ejemplo, un bebé, ¿no? el bebé, el bebé nace el bebé, inmediatamente, a veces cuando, cuando este, cuando nace el bebé, el bebé ya, ya nació. Entonces, a veces tarda la placenta para salir. Sí, era, esta es la placenta. Yo sí tengo mi bebé, hice mi bebé para poder hacer mi trabajo. Aquí está el bebé y entonces este es el cordón umbilical. Sí, este es el cordón umbilical. Si se dan cuenta, en, esta, en este cordón hay tres cejitas. Hay tres colores, tres colores. Uno por donde pasa el alimento, otro por donde pasan las emociones, y otro por donde pasa este el oxígeno. Sí. Por eso, cuando una mujer está embarazada, es muy importante, por ejemplo, si una mujer está embarazada y recibe una impresión, un susto, inmediatamente lo, lo está transmitiendo a inmediatamente lo está transmitiendo a, al bebé. Si la mujer recibe un coraje, Inmediatamente lo recibe el bebé. Sí, porque el bebé, el bebé, está bien chiquito. Sí, está aquí adentro de esta bolsa. Esto supuestamente, esa es la bolsa de la fuente. Sí, y desde que se está formando el bebé, desde que el bebé está desarrollando, desde que está chiquitito, el bebé está escuchando lo que está pasando dentro de él. Si es un niño deseado, si es un niño que dice, bueno, ya estás embarazada, yo no quiero ese bebé. Si el bebé está escuchando, si lo queremos, si lo estamos corriendo de la casa, o si tenemos muchas dudas. Que si va a ser hombre, que si va a ser mujer, que va a ser, si va a ser negro, alto, chueco, chaparro, todos los defectos que a veces comentamos dentro del núcleo familiar, todo eso escucha el bebé cuando está chiquito. Yo voy a ser mamá, sea hijo de quien sea, es mi hijo, yo lo voy a tener. Yo lo voy a parir y lo va a querer. Sí. Para preparar este, el jabón para los piojos, necesitamos tener un jabón blanco. It should not be perfumed, and it should sí. not have any dyes. Okay. It's like a neutral soap. Entonces, vamos a, a preparar, a rayarlo. We're going to grate it like, like a cheese, like you, like you could yeah. use a cheese grater. Rayar el jabón. To prepare the soap, we're going to need romero. Rosemary, romero, ajo, garlic, 
do purple for me? Apple. Purple. Purple is best. Yes. Y los huesos de aguacate. And bones of an avocado. Los huesos de aguacate. Seed of the avocado. We're going to grate these in a minute. Los huesos de aguacate. No, el jabón. When we prepare the salt. Entre más plantas tengamos para ponerle. The more plants that we have to put into the pot. Es mejor para que suelte todas sus historias curativas. ¿Cuántas cosas podemos hacer con las plantas? We can do with the plants. Y que sale más económico. A lot cheaper. Y está al alcance de nuestra gente que no tiene recursos para just about anyone who are, uh, don't have the resources or have money to go out and buy an expensive shampoo for lights or your dandruff. It's more expensive in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the pharmacy or in the, in the store. Yeah. There's a smaller pan for the herbs and a larger pot to melt the, the, the uh, soap in. He says for one soap of 250 grams, Un jabón de 250 gramos. Vamos a ocupar un cuarto de litro de agua. Quarter of a liter of water. Las que vamos a ocupar, the plants that we're going to use, si son es corteza, if it's bark, raíz, root, o planta seca, or a very dry plant, tiene que hervir nada más por 15 minutos. It should be boiled for 15 minutes. Todas las plantas frescas, all fresh plants, se hierven nada más por cinco minutos. Are only boiled for five minutes. Fuego, and you take the fire, mold it, and you put it into molds. In this case, we're going to use like like wide rectangular cake cake pans, and that's what you can use cake pans. It's going to look like a cake, really. Para que se cuaje. So that then it can it can uh, it can uh, become hard once it cools. It starts to settle. It gets hard. Ya para mañana y para mañana, we will be able to send you home with a little soap. that are not good for the body. So to prepare a, li a liter Un litro de of jarabe. hot syrup, Necesitamos we need tener 20 grams de cada planta. 20 grams of each plant. 20 grams is un, lo, nosotros lo decimos we una call pizca. It a, a pitch. Una pizca. Uh -huh. And we need 
litro y medio de miel, one liter and a half of honey. Litro y medio de miel o dos litros para que bien concentrado. And it could also be, uh, you could also use black syrup molasses. Use just about any, as long as it's a natural syrup. Planta, vamos a hervir. Once we 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 boil the plants, and once we've chosen, las vamos a poner a hervir. We're going to boil them. Sí, por 15 minutos. For 15 minutes. Entonces luego lo colamos ya que hierve. Then we're going to uh, to uh, What's it when you pass it through this? Uh, you're going to strain it. Se cuela. It's strained. Y ya que se cuela. Once it's strained. Entonces le vamos a agregar la miel. Then that's when we're going to add the, the syrup or the honey. Whatever it is you're going to make. Y moviéndolo constantemente. And then we're constantly stirring it. Una vez que esté concentrado, Once it's concentrated, lo dejamos enfriar, que let it cool down. frío, till it, it, till it cools down completely. y le podemos agregar un vasito de bacardí, and we can add like a little, like a shot of bacardí, <laughs> para eso solamente That's para que nos sirve como conservador. So that it can preserve the syrup. It's going to act as a preservative. And obviously another uh, alternative for people that might be alcoholic can use the alcohol. Then you can use glycerin. Uh, are you all afraid to share in the same glass? Some people are funny about that. Get a spoon. Get a spoon. If you're not, you can try it. Pueden probarlo, pásenlo para que lo prueben. We're also going to be taking some waiters. Thank you, thank you. You're a genius. Si se muere mi amiga, me da ella. Le digo que si se mueren que me avisen. It's good. It's very good. We're going to add some more salt. I want to try some. How is it? It's nice. It's a rich color. Look at the me going. Yeah. Very rich. Very good.